Guys, over the weekend, we got some breaking news, what was basically an internal leak showing a memo that was only meant for Meta's employees, but it was detailing more of the moves that they've been making to build up this new super intelligence platform that will be led by what is essentially like an AI dream team, sort of like a Avengers team of AI experts out there in the field that Meta has actually been poaching from other AI giants like Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, and more. So it's some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, I'm gonna break it all down for you in today's video. And as a shareholder myself, um, I'm also going to explain why this is such a big deal for Meta's business and what it can mean for the stock too, and all of it with kind of a long-term uh, mindset to it. So smash that like button if you like frequent updates like this on individual stocks. This one's a big one here, but let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Now, what exactly happened here to begin with? Well, Bloomberg uh, basically got their hands on an internal memo that was sent to employees, and it was showing that Meta is actually planning to restructure their AI division into a new group that they are calling Meta Super Intelligence Labs. And it will be basically led by Alex Wang, who's the former CEO of the data labeling startup Scale AI, which Meta invested a whopping $14 billion into, uh, buying up almost half of that entire company and basically taking away the founder and CEO, although he will be staying on their board, but now he's gonna be you know, working much more for Meta. But yeah, this is a huge move here for acquiring some top talent in AI. Wang, if you're not familiar with, he is kind of like an AI prodigy in the field. He's only 28 years old. So Meta is essentially grabbing him now while he's still young and you know, well before he's even reaching his peak in AI knowledge and expertise. And that's why they were willing to spend you know, such a monumental amount of money on that scale AI deal because I believe that it was directly tied to securing the CEO as part of the deal to lead their new super intelligence team too. So basically Meta went out there, said, hey, we're, we'll acquire almost half this company. We're gonna spend billions of dollars, but your founder and CEO has to come over to us and he's gonna be helping us now. Now, I, I don't expect all of you guys or, or the general public to be aware of all of this, but as a shareholder myself, I do try to stay up to date with these different types of investments and acquisitions. And I'll just tell you right now, guys, that this investment that they made into Scale AI at over 14 billion, it is literally the second largest investment that Meta has ever made only behind the acquisition of WhatsApp, which I think was like a decade ago. I believe it was around $19 billion worth. This one's 14 billion. How insane is that, guys? That's how important this new team and the platform, the super intelligence labs, this new division is to Meta. That's how much they're willing to go all in on it. And for those of you wondering, well, they must have spent more money on Instagram, right? Like how could this be the second largest investment that they had to have spent more on Instagram? Guys, they only spent $1 billion on Instagram. So this move in scale AI is actually 14 times larger than that amount, which is also just a sign of how successful Meta usually is in making these types of moves. Because today, I would estimate that uh, Instagram is, I would say it's worth easily more than $100 billion. So they've done a fantastic job with Instagram and they got it for a steal of a price. But yeah, all of this just shows how serious they are about investing into artificial intelligence. And it's one of the reasons why Reuters and other major publications are typically referring to all of these giant moves here by Meta as what they call Zucks Bucks, where the CEO has you know, not been shy at all about just throwing money at this problem to make sure that they do end up being a leader in artificial intelligence. In fact, OpenAI's CEO, Sam Altman, he's even accused Meta of offering $100 million to poach some of their best AI researchers, basically willing to pay them that much money in different like rewards and incentives and stuff like that. So it's pretty crazy stuff. Well, it doesn't even stop there, guys, as the new leaks from the past few days are also showing that this new super intelligence division is going to be led by the former CEO of GitHub, Nat 
Friedman, uh, kind of like co-leading it. And it will also include a whopping 11 new hires. By the way, GitHub, I just kind of glossed over that, but GitHub has been an amazing company, obviously acquired by Microsoft. And GitHub is, I don't even know what to call it, maybe like the Facebook of programmers. I mean, it's super, super important in terms of programming and what all of that will mean for coding and for AI in the future. So to take one of their leaders, that's big. And then you have a whopping uh, another 11 new hires with top AI recruits and researchers included from the biggest AI companies like OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, and more. So they're really just taking the best of the best and they're really building up this, this big team here of, of uh, just AI kind of pioneers, people that can really lead their charge in AI. Now, what even is this new super intelligence labs division? What What is the business? What What is the goal of what they're doing there? And why is it so important for Meta's business and also the stock long-term? Well, in the memo, Zuckerberg actually referred to it as a combination of systems that will be capable of performing tasks as well or even better than humans. So basically what humans are capable of doing right now, Meta wants to surpass that with all of these investments into AI. And he was quoted there saying, uh, as the pace of AI progress accelerates, developing super intelligence is coming into sight. I believe this will be the beginning of a new era of humanity, and I am fully committed to doing what it takes for Meta to lead the way. And we also have quotes from Meta's chief AI scientist, who's previous, I think he just came back on with Meta like a month ago, but he was previously um, doing a lot, ton of stuff in AI. I believe he was also working for Google, but anyway, he's he's uh, he actually won computer science's top prize for his pioneering work in AI. So he's very, very big in the field. And he was actually critiquing large language models, current ones from competitors. And he was saying, quote, how do we build AI systems that understand the physical world that have persistent memory that can reason and can plan? These are all characteristics of intelligent behavior that large language models basically cannot do, or they can only do them in a very superficial, approximate way. So basically saying ALLMs are not actually as powerful as we make them out to be, not yet, and they have limitations, and they're actually not behaving as well as humans, and that's something that really needs work on. But he added to that, he said meta is instead tracing a path towards human level AI systems, or perhaps even superhuman. And he added too that this new team will always be reaching for human intelligence and to go beyond it, finishing that now they just have a clearer vision for how to accomplish that. Well, I'll just say this, the, the most obvious way to accomplish something like that is obviously to just pour gigantic amounts of money at that problem. And when it comes to Meta, well, that's exactly what they're doing. It's really the biggest reason why I've invested in the stock. But in fact, earlier this year, they announced that they'll be spending over $70 billion on AI infrastructure alone. And by the way, this is after what they already poured into the metaverse, where they recorded an operating loss of a whopping $70 billion from their Reality Lab segment that houses their metaverse investments. Now, you might ask, how can they even afford all of this? Well, the thing is, and really the reason why, again, I've invested so much in the company is that they have a monumental cash generating machine in their social media apps. And that just pours in high margin advertiser revenue continuously. And it's why they can really invest in anything they want. And I used to argue this back then when the, the, when they had initially just started with the metaverse, I used to argue they have to invest in something. They got to do something because otherwise all you're really left with here is social media apps with gigantic amounts of users. I'll show you in just a second, but they're not really leveraging that. They have to figure out a way to invest in future growth for those areas and to leverage 
those giant platforms and that giant user base. And so when they started investing in the metaverse, I actually said, hey, this is actually not that bad of an idea because they have so much money coming in. If they just sit on that money and don't do anything with it, eventually they could become irrelevant. But if you're actually if you're proactive about it and you invest in whatever the next you know area of growth will be in the future, AI, the metaverse, you know, virtual reality, those types of things, it, it will di help you diversify a bit within your field. And again, you'll be able to leverage your giant user base. Well, anyway, the point being that they were generating so much cash. In fact, they're, they're still the second largest generator of digital advertising revenue in the entire world, only behind Google. And that has really enabled them to generate mind-blowing profits with just last year alone, they did close to a hundred billion dollars of operating cash flow. How crazy is that, guys? So in other words, you have that insane profitability, you have insane spending on artificial intelligence, and now you also have a growing talent pool of leaders and developers and researchers for the future of AI, and that's helping you build up this super intelligence platform that they're aiming to be, in their own words, more even more capable than humans, superhuman abilities, that type of stuff. And it's gonna help power and progress everything else that they do with AI, also within their business, which includes the metaverse, large language models, you know, better algorithms for advertisers, there's gaming, there's even shopping, and so much more. They've integrated all those things into all their different platforms. And I won't spend too much time on each of these, but just so you have at least a small idea of what they're doing in these different areas. When you look at like the metaverse, for example, meta is number one in VR, which by the way, this isn't necessarily a game changer, but I just want to mention it because I've, I've been getting a little into it myself recently and I'm tempted to grab one of these myself, but they actually just partnered with Microsoft to launch an Xbox branded Quest headset that I think looks so nice. And I'm a big Xbox gamer myself. So the combination here, it looks really cool. And the only thing that I, I would say kind of bums me out about it is that they, they did it for the MetaQuest 3S instead of the 3, which the 3 has better display hardware and quality. But still, for just like how sleek that black and green design looks with custom controllers too, it's very collectible in a sense. And I just think it looks so nice. I'm very tempted to pick up that bundle myself, but I haven't done so yet. I, let me know if any of you guys are thinking about that one. I, I, I do think it looks really nice. Uh, what is much more important though, obviously for the metaverse is really just the billions of social media users that they have across all their apps that they can advertise the metaverse to, which broke a new record high of over 3.4 billion last quarter. And guys, that's more than 40% of the entire world's population that you, you, you just have direct access to for not only advertising all your new AI products and services and the metaverse and all that, but you can obviously also collect massive amounts of data from to fuel your AI research and then use super intelligence platform. Now, speaking of which, it's also helping them train their large language models, which Meta is aiming to differentiate their Llama series of AI models by offering open source versions, which they're hoping will attract more developers and researchers and helping them build up a larger ecosystem than what competitors can offer who you know have been really keeping their AI tech locked in-house behind doors. Obviously, Meta will continuously integrate these AI models though into all of the different platforms and the different things that they do, like they already have, for example, with Instagram, where users can actually create their own AI chatbots. And can those chatbots, by the way, can even be based on real or fictional characters. It can be, you can literally create a chatbot based on yourself, or you can have it be based on like Darth Vader. So you can go on Instagram and actually chat with Darth Vader or like Muhammad Ali or like all these different people. Um, obviously, Muhammad Ali was a real person, but uh, is no longer with us, but you could talk to him in that way. Now, also, I think in the future, uh, one of the most important aspects of AI will be what are referred to as AI agents, which are autonomous computer programs that can actually perceive their environment and they can make decisions and, and take actions with very little to no human input. So sort of like an alternative to a human, but within 
you know, in a digital form within AI, within the metaverse, stuff like that. Well, and that's exactly what Meta is trying to do with their super intelligence division, right? So it's no wonder that a couple years ago, actually Mark Zuckerberg said that he wanted to introduce AI agents to billions of people. So that ties directly with these new investments that they're making today. And by the way, where else do you think that that type of technology would be useful? Obviously the metaverse. I mean, we literally saw in the Matrix movies how the computer programs uh, running the whole kind of show and uh, basically keeping it all intact and operating as like the law and all that kind of stuff. It, it was these so-called agents, right? Well, now you have AI agents. It's all kind of coming into fruition. It is kind of scary, I, I must admit. And I'm not saying that I'm a fan of any of this stuff, by the way, on a moral or kind of ethical level, I'm a little terrified of what the future of AI is going to ultimately look like for humanity, especially when they're talking about making superhuman AI that is so much better than humans. But I just think it's the reality that we're heading towards regardless. I don't think there's any stopping it now. Like I think the genie is out of the bottle and I, I think that's just the future we're heading towards. And so if I'm just an investor looking where to park my money, where, where to invest in, I think Meta is looking like one of the absolute clear options, one of the clear leaders for many of these trillion dollar AI markets of the future. Now, speaking of which, let's finish up here just by taking a quick look at the stock, which unfortunately has already climbed a lot this past year. And I'm not saying this to gloat or, or be cocky or anything like that, but I was putting out tons of videos talking about how much of a steal this stock really was at those lows you can see on this chart here. And I would actually get surprisingly a decent amount of negative comments saying that Meta will become irrelevant in the future or that their investments into the metaverse will bankrupt them and other similar critiques like that. But yet, you know, here we are today with the stock having recovered back up to a record high, which I agree is a tougher pill to swallow now is even their most forgiving PEG metric is about 20% higher than the sector median. But considering all the potential they still have with AI and for what is already such a dominant and incredibly strong business, I think that you know this is probably a must have still in most people's portfolios. And I'm certainly holding on to every share that I have myself for the long term, but I do think that it will also be a buy on any dips going forward. Again, right now is obviously not one of those dips. It's gonna be a tougher one to be picking up at, at these levels, but I think whenever the market drops or on any negative news that even hits Meta directly, just kind of drags it down a little bit, I think it would be an automatic pickup because the company is on fire and everything pointing to their future is looking really strong, really good at the moment. Uh, anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know if this is a stock that you own too, or if I'm alone in holding this one, let me know. All thoughts and opinions are welcome here. And just thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video regardless, and I hope you're all doing well. And I will catch you in the next one. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.